All right, I'm back with another biodiesel video. Now I've had a few requests on the channel to go through the machine and talk about some of the parts that I used and some of the costs and stuff like that. So I'm gonna do that today. Um, just before we get started, I just wanna remind you guys I don't recommend making biodiesel. I'll put a card up where you could see my five reasons why you should not make biodiesel. Think of this as just an experiment as uh, a demonstration of what I did. Uh, this is my machine. I'm not recommending that you do this. So let's just get that out of the way up front. I don't recommend that anybody does this, okay? Um, but we'll get it right into it right now. Uh, let's go over a quick overview of the machine first. Now, check out the other videos. I'll put some other cards up and uh, you can see some of my other videos where I go through making an entire batch of biodiesel and I talk about the machine a little bit more. Um, today's gonna be mostly about what components were used in the machine and how I, how I, how I built it, just as a, a demonstration. Okay, so just briefly uh, how the machine works real quick. I'm just gonna run through it real quick just to ground, uh, ground this video. The old canola oil, used canola oil, goes in this middle tank here. Uh, there's a screen that filters it roughly. 50 liters gets pumped with an electric pump into the hot water tank then another 50 liters and then I have 100 liters, I do 100 liter batches. The oil's heated in the tank. Uh, catalyst is introduced using a jug like this through this port here. Okay, we mix the oil, it reacts, then it cools, glycerin settles out on the bottom and we drain it. There's, uh, there's the glycerin from the last batch right there. Okay, about 20 liters of glycerin comes off 100 liters of biodiesel. This through here. Uh, once we have the finished biodiesel in the tank here, we use the same pump to pump it across. There's a pipe in the bottom here up into the finishing tank. This is the finishing tank. Uh, the finishing tank then has a water wash system, which I don't use anymore. I don't do the water wash. Uh, I also have a dry wash system on the side, which I'll show in a minute. And once the fuel's cleaned up, it gets the, you know, any excess glycerin is pulled off the bottom here. And then this water pump here, which pumps oil really well by, too, by the way, uh, pumps the finished biodiesel out through a one last filter and into the, uh, into your holding tank or your car. Okay, so that's the brief overview. Now we'll get into the components. And I think what I'll do is I'll just walk through from the starting point and just walk through the whole process and talk about the components. And then what I think I'll do is I'll include uh, check out the, the description below. I'll put a list of all the components and the approximate costs of what, uh, what all this stuff costs. Okay, so let's get started. I'll grab the camera and we'll start going through it. Okay, so just starting at the initial tank. So the first component is this screen filter. Now you can get these screen filters that are say a couple bucks each. Okay, that's a very rough screen filter. It just filters out the... Uh, the bigger chunks. You don't need to filter out the oil too much. Okay, uh, a bin like this, this is a 65 liter uh, plastic drum. Now you can buy these drums and again we'll, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll include the cost. I don't think they're too expensive. Um, if you have a local plastic supplier or a place like Uline, um, you, can, you can find these, these drums. It's 65 liters because it's what I had on hand. You could have, I could have used two tanks like this. Uh, which would have increased the footprint a little bit of my of my uh, base here, but I had a I had one of these on hand, so I used it as my initial my initial fill tank for the for the used oil. And like I said, I bring it up to 50 liters, dump it, another 50 liters, dump it into the hot water tank, and then that gives me 100 liters, which is approximately right there in the tank. In terms of uh, in terms of level, that's about 100 liters. Add about 20 liters of catalyst to get it up to about here, so you're getting toward the top of the tank. You could do slightly bigger batches, but it's getting with a standard 40 gallon water tank. That's about uh, 100 liters seems to work well. Okay, next after the initial holding tank, we're going to get into a series of valves. Now in this tank, there are th these are three quarter inch ball valves that I've used. They're about 15 bucks each. You can get them at Home Depot or whatever. Uh, there's several of them, one here, two, three, four, five, six, a couple up top, which we'll talk about, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five,
12. I think that's all of them. So 12 valves at about 15 bucks each. Okay. Uh, there's a bunch of clear plastic tubing. That's three quarter inch plastic tubing. And also these plastic fittings that I've used all over the place to uh, like a hose barb three quarter inch fitting to mount plastic tubing to. And in several places, some stainless steel three quarter inch clamps. Okay, and uh, then we get into some of the elbows. So there's some plastic fittings, some plastic elbows, and also a lot of black pipe, black, uh, black iron plumbing pipe. Okay, you see all this stuff out here. Lots of black fittings here. So let's just continue walking through the process. So we go down, little elbow down there, across, into the pump. Now the pump is actually a water pump. It's a 120 volt water pump. You can get those at Northern Tool or Harbor Freight. I think they're under a hundred bucks back when I, when I did it, they're probably around that now, maybe 80, 60, 70, 80. I'll include some, some pricing in the description below. Check it out. Out of the water pump, we go into another valve up into the top of the tank. Again, more elbows, black fittings, you know, a couple bucks each type thing. Another valve here. So you can shut this off. Although that's not really necessary. It's kind of an extra valve that doesn't do anything and into the tank. Then let's just keep going through the process here. There is a temperature gauge here. So as the oil comes out of the tank and gets circulated back through the pump and back up, uh, I've got this fitting here. Now this was a, a special fitting I found from a plumbing supply place that allows you to pop a little temperature sensor in the top here. So that gives me the temperature of the oil coming out of the heater and I can watch it heating up. Another valve. few electrical switches. This is the switch that turns on the, the pump. So electrical box some switches, a little bit of electrical wiring, copper wiring. Another switch up here for the tank itself. I've wired the, uh, the element through that switch. So it's manual. At the top, there's a pressure relief valve. So if we ever did have a issue in the tank where it increased in pressure because something caught fire or something, this pressure relief valve, um, what's it rated at? Can't remember, three quarter pressure release valve, it would release the pressure. I also have a, another, uh, release valve here. Usually when I'm processing in fresh air, I'll keep this valve open. So the tank's vented anyway, if this was closed, then anything that bad that happened in the tank would be the pressure would be relieved by the pressure relief valve. But, but I keep this open anyway, just so the, um, pressure never builds up. Uh, some electrical wiring. I've got a main plug there that plugs into the wall. When the fuel's done, it gets pumped across the bottom here through that tube and into this 55 gallon drum. Now these drums again are available from plastic suppliers. I, uh, I had one, I can't even remember where I got it, but I just used it because I had it on, on hand, but they're probably, I don't know, 30 or 40 bucks. I'll do some research and include the description below what, uh, what those might cost. You could use metal drums. I like plastic because it's easy to cut and it doesn't rust and it seals up nice. Up top, there's a water washing system, a misting system, which I don't use. It's just a fish like a, or an air, sorry. It's like a patio Arizona mister type, um, type mister that you can put a garden hose on. If you water wash, I don't water wash instead. I dry wash, which is uh, an air pump system here. This is a hot tub air pump. It was about a hundred bucks from a hot tub supply store. It blows steady air. It's not too loud and you can run it for hours through this PCV tube into check out the other video. You can see the details of how this all works, blows air into the bottom of the tank, which bubbles up and evaporates off any methanol and water from the reaction of the biodiesel to clean it up and um, get it ready for final use. So a little bit of PVC piping, a few bucks on this. There's a pressure relief valve here. And like I said, about a hundred bucks for the, the expensive part was this hot water 
pump. People use shop vacs and things like that, but there's fire hazards with that, so I went with a, a pump. Put a plug on the side just for extra extra electricity. So again, a couple, a few dollars for electrical stuff like that. Here is another switch. That's for the final pump, the finishing, the finished pump, which pumps the finished oil out of the finished tank. There's a six inch standpipe here to take the oil out into the pump and then out here into a, it's a 10 micron farm filter. Okay. Um, so you can buy these kits at farm supply stores just in case there's any remnants of um, anything solid, the farm filter would catch it. And then into the final valve here, into this green, uh, what do they call it? Biofuel farm tank hose static wire made in the USA, three quarter inch. Okay, so it's a biofuel resistant um, hose. If you use a standard rubber hose, like a black rubber hose, this bio diesel will soak through and eventually dissolve the hose. These are resistant um, somewhat to, to the biodiesel. So it's a green hose. That was, uh, again, from a farm supply store. I don't know, probably 40 or 50 bucks. Finally goes into this. Finally, we go into a the final nozzle here. Just a manual nozzle from a farm supply store to fill your jerry can or fill your car directly. And that's it. And the whole thing sits on a wood base. So the whole thing sits on a wood base that's six feet long. Right? So six feet end to end. And it's uh, two feet deep. And it's just two by fours. If you can see just a two by four construction, kind of like a workbench style deal with uh, just some particle board on top that I had kicking around. Um, there's some storage underneath. You can just throw hoses and buckets and filters and stuff like that underneath funnels. I had some floor joist things, some scrap pieces that I just used to, as a as a little table here to put things up on. So a little bit of lumber, some two by fours, some particle board. I don't know if you bought this stuff new, probably maybe a hundred bucks worth of lumber. I had a lot of it kicking around, so I just used what I had. It's on appliance casters as well at the bottom there, so you can move the whole machine around. You can push it, push it uh, around the garage if you need to move it. So that's it. Six feet, six feet in length, two feet deep. All sits on the same wooden frame, all connected, um, all wired up as one unit. And uh, the total cost, I'm going to add it up. Let's let's just do a guess right now. I've never really added it up. I'm going to say about six hundred, five, six hundred bucks. But I'll add up all this stuff and include it in the description below. Check it out. Let's see how close I was at my five, six hundred bucks. And that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, let me know if I didn't, if I missed something here, I can fill you in. I don't recommend anybody does this again. Check out my video of the top five reasons not to make biodiesel. Let me know what you think about that. And uh, thanks for taking this final tour. And I hope I've answered your questions about the components that are required to make a system like this, a home built system like this. Thanks for watching.